Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? So, the gold standard is wrestling. You know, it's not around for 60 years because, uh, you know, some trial by fire. That I mean, it's a standard that, you know, people know. People, people know that Resolite is the way to go. Okay, how do we get a hold of you? Roberts Wrestling at Outlook.com. Kevin Roberts, Facebook. Roberts Wrestling, Instagram. All right, so special surprise today. We have Moran Karshalava. Moran, first off, welcome to the Barbarian Hour. Uh, Moran's background, Mar- Moran was a Soviet under U-20 national champion. And, and Moran is from Akpazia. Am I saying it right, Moran? Akpazia, yeah, that's right. Akpazia, okay. So that is in the North Caucasus. So for most people... What they know of the North Caucasus is obviously they know Dagestan. They know Dagestan because of Khabib. Habib is from Dagestan. And then most of our really high level, obviously, uh, our high level freestyle wrestlers from Russia, many of them are from Dagestan and or live in Dagestan. Some are from Chechnya, some are from North Ossetia. But these are the North Caucasus. What are the other two North Caucasus that I cannot pronounce that are directly next to you guys? Um. Kabardina, Bulgaria, Cherkess, and Cherkess. That's the one that's right next to you. But honestly, Zab, uh, the most Russian who represent Russia, there's none of them Russian. They're all come from North Caucasus, like almost my country, Abkhazia, Chechen, Ingush, Ossetia, Ossetia, uh, you know. All that, people from mount, mountains. And there, I, I want to describe you how it's really started because there are eating good food. They live in the mountains. They live like healthy food. They're like different people than they're, they're, those Russians, honestly. And that's why, but that part of the... Chechen Republic of Ossetia and all that belong to Russia. And that's why they represent Russia and all that Caucasus people. And so that's Caucasus kind of people I, are, are totally, okay. So the, I just want to clarify this to people. I went to the 2009 Russian nationals. You and I have talked about it at length, right? Yeah. At length. It's going to be at more length today. But what <laughs> I noticed about Russia, first off, Russia is the most, Area wise, it is the largest country on the planet Earth by double the next country. It is yeah. massive because what you have to account for is Siberia. So, what you'll see in Russia is you have a large ethnic diversity, diverse group. Okay. And then what you came up in was the Soviet Union, which was even larger than current day Russia because it had all the satellite nations, all of the stands. Um, Azerbaijan, all these countries Georgia, that are broken off. Georgia, Azerbaijan. Armenia. Armenia, yeah. Uh, all, so yeah. All these countries that are in within the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea, right? Yeah. Am I, did I get that right? So yes. those countries that are just south of the North Caucasus, so it would be Georgia, not Turkey. Turkey was not a part of the old Soviet no. Union. Armenia, no. Azerbaijan, Georgia, right? Yeah. And then all yeah. the Caucasus. So most of the people that are in the Caucasus the North Caucasus, yes. uh, a lot of the people are, they're Muslim in religion. They, they practice Islam, correct? Um, you, you know, um, honestly, I, uh, I have to say, no, I'm, I'm Christian. I'm not You're Muslim. Christian. I'm a Prazian. Yeah. Georgians, you know, part of Georgia, Prazia was part of Georgia until Soviet Union broke up in 1991. So I won like Georgian nationals like 10 times, you know, since I was a youth wrestler to a senior. So I should be representing Georgia in Olympics in the world. But Soviet Union broke up 91, Georgia independent from Russia. And then Abkhazia independent from Georgia. But they, they said, no, 
don't get because Abkhazia subtropically one of the best climate in the world. If you remember Stalin, Elton, they all have their summer home there. It's subtropical, surrounded by mountain and a black sea and all the Russians, uh, Jared probably never heard that or from me personally, but Jared, I'm not in Russia, I'm in Abkhazia, which is uh, ecologically one of the cleanest air in the world. So when the Russian goes like, let's say you go to Florida, Hawaii, right? Same, That's same where concept. the Russian goes for their rehab, for their vacation. You get they go to often? the country of Abkhazia. Do you get back there often? Do you go back? I go back every at least five years, okay. six years. I was there six years ago. I was there also, um, uh, Zab knows, uh, Tsargush, when he won the Worlds 2010, I was there with Nick Lee, Your boy, the Nick current Lee, right? NCAA champ, his dad, his brother, Joe Lee, Carson, and then a couple other kids, Drew Hobbs, and uh, I took them. We watched Tsargush win in the Worlds 2010. Yeah, we so ethnically. Hey, ethnically, are you Georgian then? Ethnically? Uh, no, I'm Abkhazian, but the country is divided now. Basically, the location of Abkhazia is what the Georgian wanted to say. You belong to Abkhazia on a okay. map. On so a... ethnically, you're Abkhazian, correct? Yes, I okay. I have different language, different. Uh, but I wrestle for Georgia for. 15 years, I love them. Actually, one of my current coach, Zab, Nick Vazashvili, he's from Georgia. And I love him like my little kid. He's 27 years old, but I've been raised him since he was uh, eighth grader. He's coaching with me in the last 12 years. Uh, he's a, a good guy, but yes, I'm Abkhazian, we're different nationalities. Got it. Okay, so back to when we talk about this, Jared might join back up, but Ron, when you talk about the difference between, there's no bad blood between Georgia and Abkhazia, right? Like you guys, you're good to go, right? Is there bad blood yeah. there or what? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. In fact, as I said, one of the best guy who works with me in the last 12 years, it's Georgian. So I'm, it just unfortunately politics happen and that's what destroys it. I don't care, as I said, what I'm a, a Christian, I don't care who you are in a religious Muslim politician and all that. I just love the people in general. And I just want to be a good, I want to treat people the way I want to be treated. And that's who I am. But um, you go ahead, whatever you need to continue. I, I don't have the only one thing I would say, I missed uh, two Olympics when I could win and place it. I missed two Olympics, 96 and 2000. I didn't have a citizenship and I came here and I did not get my US citizenship. I could wrestle for Georgia in 96 and possibly place and win it because the guy who I beat Bogiev before I came here in 91, he ends up won the Olympics 96. Really? Uh, and the guy who plays Townsend Sanders from US, I trained him. We were the best friend. He used to come to Finlay and train with me and and uh, he finished second. So, that, but they, they asked me to wrestle for Georgia in 96. I just couldn't wrestle for Georgia in Olympics because my dad was murdered, my cousin was killed, and my family was separated for six months. And it was bad blood at the time. I could not represent Georgia because I was Abkhazian. So when I could go on back to 2010, for example, to see my family, uh, Jared, People in Abkhazia, if I would have wrestled in 96 in place in Olympics and go medal or something, people would in Abkhazia spit on me. They would uh, disrespect you. How could you represent the murder of Georgia your when you're 
Yeah, oh, man. My dad that would be like going to the enemy. You'd be going to the enemy. I know that you are a forgiving man, and that I understand that that that's a tragic thing that happened to you. Right. And obviously, before you told me that your dad and your whole family was broken apart by a war, right? I make the joke that Moran Karshish Vili, right? I didn't know the background. I didn't know that your dad was murdered. I would never make a joke like that. Do yeah. you understand that? Well, you know, so, speaking I, about I, I, it, oh, I apologize. About, I'm sorry for that. That's all right. You're talking about Hinchagashvili. Do you know I, I used to wrestle with Hinchagashvili's dad back and forth? I beat him and then he beat me. We wrestle all the time. One of the Georgian Hinchagashvili World Olympic champ. Yeah. I, so. There's a difference, but I still talk to Hinchagashvili. Still, we're good friends. I I respect him. He respect me, you know. So, I love people. Vladimir, Vladimir is retired now, right? He's not. He's not going in this Olympics. Yeah, Vladimir. I don't think he qualified. He's probably off right now. He's retired. Georgia, I think, I think know, Vladimir can just feel. Like yeah, Georgia. Hey, is say the last Georgia. name. Say the last name. His, his last name is Vladimir Hinchagashvili. Because no, Hinchagashvili. we don't say it. Right. I'm not, my, my tongue is not capable of saying his yeah. name correctly. I don't think I, I, there's no you way. Know, all these lost names of Georgian ends with Shvi, Zesh. Yeah. Like it's very hard. You got to break your tongue. Do you yeah. know that? The language, I speak four languages, right? Sometimes I get a little confused. I used to speak Georgian. I used to speak Abkhazian, Russian, and it's all different. You know, in like you said, in Caucasus, 350 ethnic nationalities. Wow. Different nation. It's like, you know, we're here in Ohio. If you go to Alaska, you still get McDonald's food, right? Correct. <laughs> It doesn't happen in Soviet Russia, you know, like they're all you, you go from one country to another country and you just come different culture. It's totally because different. Not Russia is that big. Listen, let's talk about the mountain people of the North Caucasus, yes. because I think that a lot of people really don't understand this when we talk about it. But, but like I sit here and I talk to you about it. You know, like the big ones, obviously, that people know, Dagestan. We talked about that earlier because Habib right. is from Dagestan. Now, I believe that the uh, Saitiev brothers are actually Chechnyan but live in Dagestan. Yeah. Do I have that correct? Yeah, I, I, I can fill you in on this, uh, by the way. I hope we don't get Jared too bored, right? No, no, I'm no, listening. I, I apologize right. for it. So, as I said. Uh, Jared, the most Russia who represent Russian wrestling, none of them Russian. Right. None of them. So either do you know uh, from a small a small pocket, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or Setia, do you know Zab? I by the way, when I wrestled back in Soviet Union, that's part of why I left Russia. You remember Fatzayev was in my weight class, sixty eight kilo. I was. I was going to actually bring him up. Okay, Osetia, he was Osetian, he was six-time world champ, two times Olympic champ. I was a young kid coming up. I never have a chance to wrestle him because once you won Soviet nationals in worlds, they don't want you to get hurt. Yarigan will give him, no, you're not wrestling in Soviet nationals. We already know guy, you can right? follow everyone. And that's what's happened. That's part of why Almost in 1991, I left because I didn't have, uh, and he still was in his 25s. I was 19 coming up. Uh, when he was first, Fadzaev, I was fifth in a senior national. It's pretty good for 19 years old guy, but it's end up like, not like justice he Even he won Olympics, he still got to wrestle U.S. Open and wrestle three matches and beat Colin Moore. Yeah, and just like Burroughs, the, like Burroughs, like Snyder. Burroughs. Like those guys had to yeah. wrestle the best two out of three. Get them and they, 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 they uh, make them that. vulnerable. Arsen Fedzaev. So, okay. So, just real quick. Arsen Fedzaev. We, we had Kenny Monday on last week, who I know you wrestled. Yeah. And, and, and Coach Monday was the first person 
to uh, Fadzaev bumped up to 74. Yes, 68. Yes. He bumped up in the 1989 World Championships and Monday beat him. Monday got uh, a couple nice takedowns on him, but Fadzaev was a wizard. Fadzaev was basically unbeaten, and then he went up against a bigger, stronger Kenny Monday and kind of got rolled over because Monday was so big and powerful. He was the defending Olympic champion at that weight. And that was Fadzaev's first international loss is what Coach Monday told us. Now, when yeah. you tell us that he is basically, he is not, icon. he's untouchable. At once icon. he wins the Olympics. He was the icon. He was the icon. Do he you the know? Icon. He's the Sajulayev yeah. of now. He's the Sajulayev of now for them. Yeah. And do you know Fadzaev wrestled 68 kilo, my weight class, and he also beat in some of the practices Maharbek Khadarzev, who was another Ossetian, 90 kilo world oh Olympic champ. Yes. <laughs> yes. He was that good. He Moran, was, did you ever get your hands on Arsen Fedzaev? Did you ever no, get to train that, with him? I never anything really wrestled him. I never really wrestled him. And, and then one year when he won, uh, when he did not wrestle in the Soviet Nationals. Uh, it was us wrestling. And that's kind of, it was a break for everyone. But he take for everybody in the world. You know, what are you going to do? And Yorigan always want to protect him. You know, always want to preserve him. But I I used to train with all those guys. Khadar Tsev um, and... Uh, Larry Chabela from Georgia, another world Olympic champ, 100 kilo. He was one of my best friends, and I always roommate with them when we go training camp. Every, every year, every month, we go to the training at the Belarus training, Olympic training center, and we get away two, three weeks and train only in the woods. There's no gross. There's nobody train in the woods and train like wolves, you know? That's kind of, we can touch more base the difference here and there, but it was unbelievable. Before Soviet Union broke up, 1991, I mean, now it opens up opportunity, you know, for every other young man, like Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Tajikistan, Armenia, Georgia. Look at Georgia alone. You know, that's own country, almost third every year in the world. I mean, that's the roots I yeah, came from. That's the roots mm -hmm. I used to train in Abkhazia, but in Georgia, that was part of it. There are so many world champions comes out of there. But um, I had a privilege to train with most world Olympic champions, you know, and from Soviet Union. So I before. missed it though. I cut out there on the internet and I jumped back in there. So you were training, you came over here, um, kind of in your peak, right? But you could have wrestled for Georgia, but you would have been I, the bad guy, right? You'd have been the bad guy. I was guy. 23 years old, Jared. I uh, was in my peak. You're a peak, right? Yeah. And you came over here and, right? Yes, didn't have citizenship here, so you couldn't compete here either, right? But you competed. Well, when I came, Jared, when I came, part of a decision I make mm -hmm. when I came here, I felt so great. And before I came here, as I said, I, I beat Bogiev, who won the '96 Olympic. I also lost. Um, Zeb should know this. I also lost to Park Jansun. 5-5 five, five in overtime at Medved International Tournament. Park Jansun from South Korea beat Kenny Monday in 92 Olympics. Wow. Yeah. 91, I came here. Five, five, 91, me? I wrestled Park Jansun, the guy who won Worlds in 91. And then he won 92 Olympics. And he I... Kenny in the gold medal match? Yes. I, I believe Kenny Monday, he beat in a gold medal match. I I was beating him 4-0, and I lost him in overtime 5-5. Five, five, but that time, it was overtime, the last point wins it. And he ends up, I came here, and he won the Worlds, he won the Olympics. 
92. I was at my peak. Right. When I came here, I just thought, Jared, I would get my citizenship, quit, so I can wrestle in the Worlds, in Olympics. But it did not go that way. Uh, Congressman Oxley from Ohio promised me to expedite my citizenship and, never and to get me a quicker, like a, yeah. a I mean, good guy, but not quick enough, right? No, it, well, it was it, over it, a, de the, a decade. Hold on, cool. the story. Just wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I, I remember, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I like right. to put it out there. I'm all right with being wrong. You got it 11th hour. You got it the last minute before the 2000 Olympic trials, right? Isn't that yeah. what it was? You got it, and like at that point, you weren't you weren't primed up like you would have been in 96. You weren't primed up like you would have been in 92. 92, you would have been like, just, just, you were just heading up in 92. 96 would have been the prime for you. And in 2000, you're a little older, right? You're right. 2000, you're a little older. Okay. I, I don't need to say it, but Zap, 92, I wrestled Michigan Open in our national, they used to have. I wrestled, I had opportunity to wrestle Pat Santoro. I did not know who he was. I take full Pat Santoro. And Ken Ramsey come up to me and he goes, do you know who you just take full? I said, I don't care. I don't care who he is. I want to win Olympics. I was stubborn. I want to win well. He goes, you just take full NCAA champ, Pat Santoro. So I didn't even know he was an NCAA champ. But that's you, what I was you were all unreal, what I'm trying to say. I was in my peak 23. Mm -hmm. And For I sure. 92 through 96 was was the Thanks. wheelhouse. We needed you to get on the team. Now, here's the other thing about Moran. Moran, you came over in 91, right? Did you come over right. in 91? 1991. Okay. 30 years. This May, past May. I celebrate 30 years being me. I'm getting old. <laughs> we all, I remember you came to Oak Harbor in like 92 or 93. I, think yes. it was 93. I was friends with your brothers. Yes. Yes. And you were, yes. you were doing the, these crazy lat whips, the, the Nyasha Yats lat whip thing that you saw yeah, in the, the highlight whip. video. Yeah. And you're doing all this crazy stuff. And my brother Tate was your dummy. And I remember his arms from here all the way to his lats were bruised where you were grabbing. And I remember asking him, I'm like, dude, he was throwing you around like a rag doll, just mauling you. And you, you knew very little English. Well, and you know how we do it. Repetition, repetition. Yeah. yeah, 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 repetition. yeah, yeah. Yes. Ironman. So, so, so I remember my brother, I remember being like, did that hurt? He goes, no, actually it didn't hurt at all. He's so good at it. He couldn't hurt me. He's like, he's so good. And he's so, fluent and he's so yeah. like you know fluent, what you're doing and my fluent. brother kind of knew what he was doing so he knew how to fall i mean dude you were you were hitting things you were hitting arm spins on him you were hitting these crazy lat webs on him you were doing all this stuff to him and you <laughs> i remember the instruction yeah. was in broken english because you, you were just learning english at that point yeah and uh it was amazing and i was like a seventh grader and i was like this guy is a freak it was unbelievable to watch you put on a clinic. And and uh, now, in know. hindsight, obviously, with limited English, uh, it's hard for you to explain things. But, like, what you were doing now, I know you can obviously articulate them now, judging by the athletes you put out and your coach and your kid. We clearly know you know how to coach, right? But, like, talk, do you remember that? Do you remember coming and, and showing things as, as a person? I, I got to tell you guys, be, yeah, before I get distracted and stop me if I get off, but you just talk about good subject, and I want Jared to know. Hey, Jared, in order to be the best wrestler, you don't have to be the strongest guy. Right. Throwing these muscles. Whenever I saw those big guys with muscular, I'm like, good. I'm going to be so Bring sneaky. Them on. So Bring slick. them on. Yeah. Bring them in. I was never afraid. You know, it's sometimes kids intimidated. See all that big guy jumping around doesn't matter zab you're so right i would say i love technique i still drill with my kids 220 pounds 
or 50 pounds. I have 65 pounds. They're one of the 10 years old, the best kids. I, I have to bring myself to, to a 10 years old boy to a 65 pound, and I have to know how to wrestle with the big guy. You what, know, what kind of leverage do you use, right? What, what kind of leverage? I, I, I'm the best dummy. I will share with you guys, I'm going off too much. I love Alan Freed, right? You guys know Alan Freed. He's one of the best wrestlers in the country. You know, I, I, I have a lot of respect for him. We were roommate in the, Indiana. He roommate with me. He asked me to train for the Worlds in 96 uh, for Olympics. And he came and was my roommate. Alan Freed was telling me, Zab, this. When we were in Olympic Training Center in 92, uh, 95, you know, uh, Tom Erickson at Purdue coach, a big guy, 220 pounds. He was nine times one up after Bruce Baumgart. So he left. He didn't have a partner to, to do a spar and matches. And he was staying there. He's like, who wants to wrestle? I said, I want to wrestle. So Alan goes, no, no, he's crazy. He's going to hurt you. I said, I don't care. I came from Russia. This is, I'm still 25 years under. So I wrestle, I swear. Alan will tell you, I did a spar almost three, two, you know? And I don't want to say officially, but you guys kind of making me say it. That guy was a monster and scared. You Tom know? Erickson is six foot five, 290 pounds. He's you undershot it. He's yeah, he you gotta ask Alan Freed about that. Before. So yeah, you're the not point here. I I I I need to know how to put my body up among 10 years old kids, how to drill and among a big guy. And that's what the Russians are. They don't train all the time. Give me the best partner. Give me the best part. No, you got to drill with light. You got to drill with weak. You got to drill with best. And that's why they're so slick. That's the difference. Not about pumping your muscles. Do you know, by the way, I want you to know, before I came, I was 23 years old. I wrestled some world Olympic champions, right? I never lift weight in my life. Do you know my lift weight was? Your Natural. Body, right? Your body, right? Body I would, weight, core, right? I, I, I would do ropes. I would. Oh. I was doing one time at the training center, uh, Olympic training center before 96. Tom Brands did 53 pull-ups. I did 52. He beat me by one. So I, I was naturally gifted on a pull-ups and ropes, ropes, and run and work out. I used to carry a log, a tree log. I, I don't have fancy equipment. I put a tree log in my shoulder and jog for a couple hundred yards back, do my squats. I used to get up and run every morning in the mountains, in a river. I I. Nobody's in there like seven in the morning, six in the morning. I run in my, because I'm from kind of a mountains. So I go run three miles. Nobody there on the river. I jump almost naked, jump in the river <laughs> and come <laughs> put my pants back and I'm carrying rocks, heavy rocks. Uh, and I throw rocks, throw uh, rocks, heavy. Okay. Okay, it's primitive training. So just real quick, real quick. The yeah. core questions that everybody's going to have. The core questions. We want to get to, I want, okay. I, I, I want to get the difference between our training system and your guys' training system. Yeah. I, I love your passion. But what brought you over in 91? Who was the anchor for you in the United States of America? Who brought you over? How did you get over here? Did you fly over? Did you? Did you come up with an exchange? How did you? You defected. That's you literally Great defected. Question. Yes, yes. It's a great question, Zeb. As I said in 
two months ago in May of 30th, it was 30 years since I landed in this world here in the United States. And I love it. I love, I married the American girl. She gives me four beautiful kids and she changed my life. I, I married uh, uh, one of the honest girl, one of the religious girl, and I'm very lucky. However, what I'm thankful today is that the person who brought me here was Coach John Jeffire from University of Finland. Small school, right? D2. At that time, it was maybe NAIA. You and, won the NAIA National Championship for Finley at 167 pounds, weighing 155. Right, right. What did you weigh 150? Did, you played 150. I did that because Jeff Fire helped to bring me here, and he needs to win, and I want him to become coach of the year. He only have six kids when I came in 91. Now there's 40, 50 kids. He asked me, I just want to win the national championship. And he said, I know you can win any weight class. You need to jump two weight class up. And can you That's do it? Cut, cut a ton of weight too, right? I mean, that, it wasn't the rules in place now. So, right? I mean, you yeah, the people on the, on the podium, the people on the podium stay in third place, fourth place, fifth place, staying higher than me. They're probably 30 uh, or 40 pounds heavier than you too. Right? Yeah. They were 30 or 40 and pounds heavier than cut. you by the time of the finals. Well, by the way, Zeb, you guys should know the guy who I beat in the final, it was 42nd. I, I pinned him. It was uh, Shipman, Scott Shipman no from way. West Liberty. He won no two times. You two times. Shipman. Scott Shipman won after I graduate, 95. He won the next two, Division two, two times. Yeah, Scott Shipman uh, from West Liberty. Wow. Okay, rewind, rewind. How does Jeff Fire make contact with Moran Karshalava? So here's what's, what's the first, happened. What's the first yeah. meeting? First of all, it's a good question. I'm glad you're bringing me back. Um, so before Soviet Union broke up, kind of in 91, my team, remember, I'm from Abkhazia. That's... True, right? However, I went to Russia and received a scholarship in Russia, St. Petersburg. So from Abkhazia, when I was 17, graduate from high school, I went to Russia. I got invited to train in Olympic Train Center. And I used to train there. I, I went there and wrestle and train in St. Petersburg for four, five years with Peter Naniev, who was a, a world champ 90 kilo and a couple others so i spent four or five years in st petersburg and then my team when i was at university we won soviet university national championships which is the difference likely different than the ncas it's not as big as ncas but we did have Soviet University as well. So my team won. And I won as an individual too, obviously. So my team got invited. John Jeffire got a hold of, and he invited university and my team to come and do some uh, two weeks exchange uh, trip, wrestle in Ohio, Cleveland, Medina, so that was in 1991, he hosted my Soviet national team. And after that, my team went back and I decided to stay. So the whole, uh, one of my hosts, if you ever have a chance, he will tell you, KGB got involved. K hey, who didn't get involved? What? Oh, yeah. KGB, what? Yeah, I, I'm... And Did they show up. Did they show FBI, up at the house of your FBI here and got involved and all that. So everybody on the team from USA to Russia, my, my team Russia, everybody wants me to go back. I got escape. I ran. 
I left the restaurant where we were celebrating. No way. Everybody. Well, the thing is, the Russian, the Russian wants me to go back because they would have get trouble. I mean, what did you do with my wrestler, my my student, my uh, and the Soviet national team? It was, it wasn't like a lot of people stand there in '91. I was one of the few kind of got to have a curse. But that was the biggest decision I ever made in my life. Leaving you know my the, country. You know the balls that takes? Do you know the balls that takes what you did? Do you understand that? So like I, that, have no, that takes balls, I, man. I have no language. You guys will laugh. If I walk, walk on a women's bathroom, people scream and I get out. <laughs> That's how clueless I was. You didn't understand. But, yeah. So I managed to go to the University of Finland. Thank you to John Jaffire, Coach Jaffire. You know, after three months, I learned the English language department and start teaching me. And at that time, university cost $25,000. I didn't even have $25. So I, but the president and university said, hey, you help to coach our team? We'll help you to get in school. And we will... So I was graduate after four years. I'm proud to say I'm the first Abkhazian from Abkhazia who got American college degree, uh, bachelor degree of four years in physical education. I always want to be a coach. So uh, I'm you got so a degree from for Finley. Jeff you got a degree from Finley. Yeah. Then you came back and wrestled? Or did you wrestle within that? You were coaching, actually. You were coaching. I was guy. coaching, and I got um, what do you call that? One last year, I got um, eligibility, eligibility to wrestle one more year. That was one year I just got left because the Russia, where I studied three years, Jared, that's mm -hmm. they account some credits. Out of that. Okay. Yeah, Got and it. so I only was able to wrestle only one year with that eligibility. And then I coached and I wrestled both, but I was able to wrestle two weight class above me and I weigh 150 and I, I wrestle 167. People cut down from 190. As I That's said, it was... Um, Scott Shipman and then also Simon Fraser, the freestyle national team from Canada. They have their team there. There was Olympic champion who was wrestling a lower weight class below me who won the next uh, 150, by the way. It was. Wow. But so. Yeah, I got to say, Zeb, I owe John Jafire a great thank you. And. I'm lucky. I, I'm. He's in Michigan right now. He's an English teacher, and he is an amazing friend. And it changed, you know, my whole life. Obviously, um, and that's how I end up. 1991. He invited my team. Everybody went back. Everybody was fighting me again. But I end up make a big decision. So. That's a, that's a real big decision. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's crazy what you did. So after that, I, I, so when I really started hanging out with you and going to camps with you and staying yeah. with you, it was with Ken Ramsey. So yeah. then Kenny, you and Ken Ramsey from Finley, you go to Ohio state, right? And you move to yeah. central Ohio. And I remember, I don't know if you remember the story, but I'm going to share this story. You, Ken Ramsey and, uh, and I, and a kid named Billy Cannon. Jared, do you know Billy yeah, Cannon? Billy Cannon yeah, Clay, right? Late, we late we guy. were there. Oh. Yeah. So we went to a wrestling camp in like Huntington, West Virginia for Shirtow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he remembers. And we get there and Shirtow always brought guys to the Columbia, to the Ohio State camps and, you know, they kind of reciprocated, right? We get there and Shirtow's like, what are these two guys doing here? And Ramsey, Ken Ramsey's like, well, they're with us. And, and then, you know, that should be it because he brings a bunch of guys to the Ohio State camp and Ken comps them, right? So, Shirtow's like, no, they got to mop mats. And Ramsey's like, they're not mopping mats. And then he goes, well, they got to do something. They just can't come here for free. So, so these guys are the two headline clinicians. 
Moran Karshalava and Ken Ramsey are the two head clinicians for Shirtow that night. And they're like, no, nah, they're not mopping mats. And then Shirtow's like, well, they got to sleep on the floor then. They can't sleep on the beds. Ramsey's like, they're not sleeping on the floor. They're sleeping on the beds. And then finally, <laughs> Moran and, and Ken are like, yeah, we're just going to leave then. If our two guys can't go to this camp for free and you bring 10 guys to my camp for free, we're not going to do this. And then it like turned out like Shirtow got super mad. And these two were going to walk. They were going to walk. They were like, Moran's like, I'll walk. I'll, let's get out of here. We don't need this. And they're going to walk because he wanted us to like mop mats or do something because he wasn't happy with us getting a free camp. Yeah. And these two were just going to bet. They they're were like, a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to like strong arm these two. And Ramsey and Moran are like, not having it, dude. They're like, listen, Ken. We'll leave right now. We don't need any money from you. These guys are going to camp for free. You bring guys to our camps all the time. Not, not happening. And they were going to walk. Do you remember that, Ron? Yeah, Zab, you know, I know Chirto here is a very good businessman. I worked my butt off. He, I, I didn't teach eight hours. I think I taught 12 hours. You know, I taught nonstop there, you know, because I was a good technician. And Jared, he would slave me. He uh, would do like crazy, like a nonstop. Oh, they like your technique. And they're like, well, then you can't even bring one, two guys to work. Right. That's, That's just not right. Yeah. Him, you know, but yeah, Ken was, Ken was good to me. I can't complain. You know, we end up, I, I did a lot of clinics for him, but he make you work like, destroy you he'll take every juice <laughs> out of you work you hard he getting every penny out of you yeah yeah man you, you guys are ready to walk i was so like i didn't know what to say because it felt like i was being the problem but in reality he was the problem because he, how old were you then is that how old were you like middle school oh no we were high school because billy oh, no. billy cannon was going into uh he went from clay to Billy lake and right? was going he was going to be a junior or a sophomore and i was going to be a junior because i'm a year older than him and yeah, and, and Billy Cannon worked hard and we both worked hard. And it was it was kind of freaking cool just to be with these two guys and how they treated us was awesome. How you and Kenny treated us, I just want to thank you, man. You guys always treated us not like we were like young, you know, guys that should be thankful to be around you. You guys always treated us pretty equitably. Well, I tell you what, cool. Sam, uh, both of you, Jared, you, you and you guys both helping so much the young kids. Honestly, Jared, I you know that I don't like pushing the kids go to the tournament too much. Right. You know, right. I'll right. get to the point if Zab asked me, but I always push for OAC. You want to <laughs> be the best wrestler? You know, I train my kids like a world championship Olympics, right. Olympics and world championships at OAC. You know, I always go to OAC and. If people tell me, oh, we won the Ohio way, new way, my way, I'm like, that's all Joe. If you want to be the best wrestler, you go to OAC, you know, and that's it. Uh, I always push he's not lying. No, you're right. But yeah, we, we know, yeah, your, your approach is different, but you definitely, uh, you know, you, you've been doing it for a while and people know what they're coming. That, you know, a buddy of mine brings his, you know, Connor Dow, you know, Josh and Connor, they know they come down and, you know, you have it, you have it going on. You know, what you you're know that, uh, you know, Tulsa Nationals, Jack, Jack, uh, roller, huh? Jack roller, Jack roller. I used to go there too, man, all the time. You know, my, my team won like five, six times. We won as a team uh, and then it's a lot of trouble in there. Yeah. So I always push it's 12 hours, you know, and, and, uh, I always push OAC or Tulsa National. I have some but, pictures. I'll have to send you some throwback. I think it was when it was at OU when your your team won it. It's some it's some old some old faces. It's pretty cool to look back. I think when you guys won it was OU or Cleveland State. There's some old pictures. I think 07, 08. Yeah. Know, team yeah. Ron. I mean, you you're always there, obviously, but it's pretty cool to look back at some of these pictures, you know, with the young faces. I think, you know, like Caleb Romero and some of those. You know, young faces uh, back then. Caleb, Caleb, Romani, and yeah, all yeah, those guys, yeah. actually. I had a pretty good young team, and we're still going pretty hard. But 
Overall, Zab, what you do is also, it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, getting interviews and um, educating the kids, you know, and following wrestling. Dude, where does Zab come from? You know, I believe this, Zab. You don't have to be everybody become a world Olympic champ. Everybody has dreams. Everybody has dreamed to be the world. I don't even know. Luckily, I didn't get my citizenship 11 years. And after that, on the 11th year, I was training uh, kids at Ohio State. I have Carson was born one years old. I'm pretty much 33 years. It's my retirement. And then at Ohio State, I coach him at the camp at Ohio State when I coached there. And I got a call two weeks. They said, oh, Miran, you're becoming you uh, American citizen. So I went and take the oath and become a citizen of United States. And in two weeks, I trained two weeks. I probably cut about eight, 10 pounds. And I went and wrestled in Cincinnati. And I didn't win it. I ended up finishing fourth. Uh, Chris Bono ended up winning that year and make the world team. But I was already kind of retiring, you know. I tried it. And then, you know, the question was, well, yeah, two weeks. What are you going to do two weeks? How do you, you know, right, I didn't right. have the same training preparation. And then, you know, I had an interview with Columbus Dispatch and like, are you going to train uh, at the Olympic Train Center and get prepared? You got a chance now. I'm 33 and I have my first child and I'm focusing at Ohio State. You know, I said, no, my time is expired. I'm going to go and make the new champions. I'm going to stay and help the kids who needs my help. And that's the 2003, you know, um, I finished third in NCAs. Uh, 2003, that was best result we have at the Ohio State. Um, so I was proud to coach these kids, you know, like Tommy Rollins, J.D. Bergman, uh, Jeff Ratliff, uh, Ryan Heber, and uh, Blake Kaplan was All-American. Um, man, it was a good effort. I worked with all those kids and we finished third. Um, John Clark was on the team. Johnny Clark, yes. How could I miss? <laughs> Good job, man. So, so, Moran, man, he don't forget. Moran, Moran, the the, the million dollar question is, and we ha we had this discussion with Kenny uh, Monday. The million dollar question is why? What's so different about our systems? Okay, why? How did you come up? How did you come up? And then ultimately we'll come to why are you guys so much better than the world right now? Why is, why is the Russian and the former Russian Soviet countries, why are they so much better than the world right now? Right. Okay. What was okay. the system? Like that is, that's a million dollar question. That is a good question. I, I will tell you, first of all, bring me back later with the system, but here's what I want Jared to know. You've been in Russia. In America, everyone has a chance, right? Look at how many clubs around every right. corner. Right. And some of the kids here get involved maybe just to for themselves to stay and protect themselves. And so I can, somebody trying to bully me, I'm going to protect myself, right? No, in Russia, I told you, most Russians, none of them Russian, almost representing Russia. Most Russian team right now from Ossetia, Dagestan, uh, Chechen, Ingush, Dagestan, Abkhazia. Sargush wrestled for Russia, right? He won 2010. And he lost in Olympics, Jordan Burrell, right? Sargush could not wrestle for Abkhazia, so he has to wrestle for Russia. And that's what you have. The people from the mountains, the people 
do it there, you know, in a so passionate way, Zab and Jared. They, they want their kids be brave. They want their kids be a man. In, in, in the mountains, North Caucasus, the people I come from, Georgia, Abkhazia, all that, Armenia, you, you, you just don't want to play hockey, you know? Or I know America, it's baseball, it's popular, but it's a joke for them. A man's got to wrestle. A man's got to show his physicality. A man's got to stand up and protect his family. A man's got to stand up and die for his brother, sister, mother, father. And that's the culture you have from North Caucasus. Every one of the father who's there, they want their kids. My son is a wrestler. It's like, I don't know, maybe baseball is popular here because I didn't grow up with that. I, I'm not too much crazy about it. So it makes me boring to watch that. But in, in, in same way in that culture, you know, the people want their son. That's my son. He's right. brave. He's, he goes against the fire. He goes against the ocean. If you even drown, handcuff and drown him in the bottom of the ocean, he has to find a way to climb up. That's the courage. And also in Russia, when you win the world in Olympics, you become a legend. They will pay you good. They will take care of you rest of your life. And Where's then the money come from? Where's the money come from? When the money comes from the government, the government, or let's say, um, Zeb, what town you from? I forget. Um, Oak Harbor. Oak Harbor. Oak Harbor, so proud of Zeb Miller. He becomes so successful. That little town will throw a million dollars and pay you for a beautiful home, a beautiful car, a beautiful, they, they will um, share with you the glory you give them because they're proud of you. And then they will, like Bogia, he's from Ossetia. When he won 96 Olympics, they pay him a million dollars and he's retired. You know, basically. Same thing with Fadzaev? Same thing with Fadzaev? Same thing with Fadzaev. Same thing with Khadartsev. Same thing with Khabelov. You know, Khabelov was two-time world champ and Olympic champ, 100 kilo. He was my good friend. You know, today he is in Georgian parliament. He is in charge. Saitiev is a politician. Fadzaev is the politician. So what so that is, does, so is Jared, here you got to have knowledge, right? Education. Right. Education is the key. I preach the kids, don't be dumb. You gotta have a college degree. Without this, you're nothing. Over there, they brainwash you. You're training. You're training for prestige. And you know, um, even if you don't have a good college degree, the connection, the reputation you have, because whatever, you're a world Olympic champ, your door is open everywhere. They will greet you. They will meet you. They will favor you. And There's loyalty then, right? They, they just go so much. And that's why the, they, they get so much glory. So they do it 100%. Here's one other thing. When the kids become a world champ, his coach become a world Olympic champ too. And that's why in United States, we don't have the loyalty. Kids jump from one club to another and kids go from one club to another. It never happened there, Zap. You go to one club, even if three miles away, another club, they will never go there. It's kind of, you, you, you're not showing the loyalty. You got to, so when the kids won the world, like when Hinjagashvili won the world in Olympics, do you know Hinchagashvili's coach was coaching against me when he coached his own dad? That, that coach is that old. But today he gets a glory. He's almost a grandpa, Hinchagashvili's coach. He coached his dad 
and then Hinchagashvili Vladimir too. They stay forever, you know, the loyalty. It's loyalty. It's loyalty, and whoever you start with, you stick with them. Right. And so you know, you start with, you stick with them. It's not this, hey, this club's not, Moran's not doing it for me, so I'm going to go over to Pursuit. Pursuit's not right. doing it for me, so I'm right. going to go over to Crazy Goats. Crazy Goats isn't doing it for me, so I'm going to go over to whatever club there is in Columbus. I will tell you guys, honestly, I'm going to jump and say this. In America, we think money can buy anything. Yes, everything for sale in America, except one thing, wrestling. You can't buy OAC. You can't buy a state championship. You cannot buy uh, uh, NCA or Worlds and Olympics. You cannot buy. You got to earn it. So I don't care. It's called a consistent system. Now, you can go jump to the club, to another club, if that coach is not teaching anything. There's some coaches maybe uh, blow the whistle and go live. Well, you, your grandpa can do that. Give him a whistle, let him yeah. go wrestle, right? If you're yeah. not teaching, uh, if you're not teaching, I believe this, simple example. If I love being a carpenter, you know, my dad was a carpenter all his life, but I never learned any tools. He never pushed me anything. And today I want to be a carpenter. You know, if you give me a hammer and say, Miran, go build a house, I can't do that. You got to have every tool. You, 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 you. I'm right with you there. My dad saying that. You can don't build a house. Have have no tool. <laughs> well, how do you manage to win four times state champ? Got to have tools. Got to have tools. And I believe the tools you collect from six years old to a high school graduate, that's the most important thing you can learn. It's not about building strength. I never even lift weight in my life, but I beat some world Olympic champions in my life. And you know, the point here, everybody think that the grass is greener the other side, but sometimes consistency and believe in your system, believe in your training, believe in your coaches, regardless where they're at, if they're not getting better, they the parents say, oh, I can go to the next club and then maybe I get better. Doesn't matter. Place to blame somewhere else, right? It's easy to blame. It, it, you have to be patient. This is why I don't let my kids compete too much uh, and travel too much. And it takes a lot of time. And the kids, if their body is not mature or they, they're they not mature physically themselves, if they don't have the technique, you know, Jared, you wrestle, Zab Boat. It, after high school, it's too late to learn technique. It's before you get graduate from high school, what you learn is the most important part of your future. If you ever want to be an NCAA champ, a world champ, an Olympic champ. That's why I kind of got out of Ohio State and I started doing my club. And sometimes, you know, you have to be, I said, I have a kid when my son was born, six years old kids, Carson. Uh, you know, I love Dave Schultz, you know, Dave Schultz and I were good friends and we trained together and he was one of the most brilliant, you know, because before Dave Schultz got murdered, I was with him training in 95 in 94. And he's like, he was so fluent in Russia. He's been in Russia 50 times. And he was so fluent in Russia and unbelievable. When, when some of them American kids go lift weight, he was going to Russia and learn their technique and learn slickness. And when, when he met me in 91 at the DuPont Olympic Train Center, I wrestled good. And, uh, and he saw me and he's like, whoa, I don't need to go Russia anymore. Russia is here. Let me introduce <laughs> you to John DuPont and that crazy one of the worst guy I've ever met, he introduced me and he's like, now you're going to train with me. You're going to be flying here. And that's what we were doing. So you can tell from Dave Schultz, 
I believe he was one of the smartest, you know, slick technique, technique. That's what I believe, you know, and be patient and be patient. Um, okay. So, so, okay. You talk about how different it is, right? You just explained to us how different the difference between people try and buy success, right? People try and jump clubs. They place blame. This coach isn't doing, it's not my kid's fault, right? You can't, you can't necessarily, but you cannot, we know this. You cannot win a U.S. open title, uh, world team trials, NCAAs, just because you paid the most money. You gotta be, you gotta be the best person. And that's through building your craft, building your skills, build you using and, and, and developing tools, physical tools, mental tools to become a champion, right? Correct. What is so different about your system? Why is your system? First off, how did they draw Moran Karchalava into the system? And then what did the system consist of? How early are you starting kids in under the old Soviet system, which is still the system they're using? The government might have changed, but it's still the same system that they're using from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and so on to now, right? It's the same system. They're labeling kids as an athlete and kids are actually going to sports specific school. Is that correct? Yes. You're not going to, you, you know, Hey, you got to have a 2.5 GPA or they're not going to let you wrestle. It's none of that. No. No. Academics is not hooked to no. your athletic performance. You don't even actually have to do any classes if you don't want to, you don't have to actually continue your education. You're at a university setting, but that is not contingent upon whether you're going to wrestle or not in eligibility, that is out the window. Correct. Right. Okay. That's how did the, they, how did they get you though? How did you give me your journey through the old Soviet system? And how, when did they grab you? And when did they figure out this guy's a mountain warrior? Cause that's the, the theme that you tell over and over the people in the North Caucasus are mountain warriors. Right. They are mountain warriors. They are mountain warriors. They have thousands of years of tradition of mountain war, warriors and battling off conquerors who are coming in uh, through the mountains to defeat them and, and conquer them, right? Yeah. So, how so did they naturally, get you? naturally, uh, Zeb, see if I can give you enough definition about the mountains, people, Chechen, uh, uh, Georgia, Abkhazia, and Gush, Ossetia, why they're so better. First of all, the food they eat too. They, they eat more natural food. Uh, you know, how do you see the farmers so strong, right? The guy who, hell, bail, you know, kind of do all the work, you know, and they are naturally more gifted, right? Naturally. That's important. Plus, they live and eat better food, breathe better air in the mountains. And also, it's not important for them to go to college. It's important for them to train uh, seven, I can't say seven days a week because you're going to burn out, okay? But it is important, like not like my son Carson. He's at Ohio State. He's got to take full courses, 12, 15 credit hours each semester, and he's got to keep maintaining his eligibility, right? And that is important to stay focused, but he also got to be trained, uh, lifting weight six o'clock and be at the practice and all that. There's a lot of eating up time here in the United States, and but I love it. Once you broke and you break the bone, you gotta have education. I believe in also in education since I came over to this country. But before I came over to this country, I didn't care about education. Because, because you were in a system that did not necessitate or care about education. They cared about glory and title. Right. How so did you get you into know, that system? So do you know Fadzaev, why he was six-time world champ? He works in politician right now. But when Fadzaev was at who, I don't know what major he graduated from college, but I can tell you he never went probably in school because he was traveling 12 times a year around the country, traveling pretty much every month to compete. There, there's no school. There's no school like our NCAA champs do here. And uh, that's that gives you a lot of time to train, right? Jared, you know how that's a big difference. Also, the government, 
gives you so much. So Zeb, you can travel around the world. I'm just gonna give you a little small by small. You have a passport, you can go France, you can go to Italy, you can go there. In Russia during Soviet Union time, you cannot travel. To travel abroad to France or Italy, you have to be involved in a sport. And that's what motivates. When you travel abroad, you become popular. Oh my gosh, I see France, I see Italy, I see China, I see whatever, Poland, right? So each time you travel, you bring money to your family. You bring sources. When you win the tournament, your family become popular. So I will tell you one story quick. Um, when I train in St. Petersburg, I train with the guy, a judo, two-time world champ, an Olympic champ, um, Abdullayev. He was from Dagestan. You, you don't know. So we, we live in a train center and every time we come in, the guy sit and watch TV, but he trained. He never went to school almost. But you know, today he was hired almost by President Putin and he's got probably three, four houses because he become a world Olympic champion. President Putin likes wrestling and he used to train in St. Petersburg. So it's a popularity. It's a, it's, it just, when you won the world's Olympics, they give you everything. And that's what motivates here also. Here's why the Russian system. Uh, here, we, we burn out kids too. What, 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 what you tell me, I coached for 12 years in division one school too. And kids here, 22, right? It's your prime time when you become very knowledgeable at wrestling and most kids, what? They quit. They, they finish their career because they got too many injuries. They got enough cut weight, right, Jared? Right. Hey, then they don't want it anymore, cut weight. No, no, passion, no passion for it left. Because America is also business. I understand. NCA is probably bigger than the world championship, but you compete every weekend. Look what Big Ten, man. Right. Isn't that a, a meat grinder? An absolute meat grinder. Yeah. So which kids after NCAs, instead of train for the worlds in Olympics, they go chill out. They want a break. They gain 20, 30 pounds. They're overgrowing because their body is tired competing every week. Every other week, there's a lot of pressure. But it's also part of why they have scholarship. So there's a different system. Why Sajulayev? Why Fadzayev, Khadartsev, and all those guys stay so long? 22, are you kidding me? 22, you just, just I was just mature in the wrestling. And I just grow up so much. And uh, here, that's why I don't push my kids. Like today, Jared, you know, some of the parents, they want now to win Tulsa. Hey, Carson never went to Tulsa Nationals, but he he won Fargo. He won multiple states, and he's NCA. I hope one day he's going to win an NCA and be a national champ and a world Olympic champ because I just want to preserve him, not to quit after 22. You know, we've had this uh, conversation with Zep. There's only so much you know the, the machine or the car can take. There's only so much tread on a tire, right? We, yeah, there's only so, so, many, right. so many times a car can start up, right? That's what it, right, yeah. Right, and you know, we, we're just a goer here all the time. Go, go, from one competition to another competition. From one competition, well, it's, I, I, I respect Americans' fathers, okay? Because without Americans' father who drives a distance, I have people who drive to me 10 hours, 12 hours. Nick Lee is dead. You know, I preach. Nick, Nick uh, Lee is dead is one of my best friends. Over 20 years, I've never seen him a better father. They were so dedicated. They drove from modern day. 
Indiana, Evansville, you know, six and a half hours for 11 years. They were here, those three brothers. I started training them when Nick was seven years old and his brother Joe six and Matthew was five. They're all, but what was it? A system. Chris understood. What should I do? I said, Chris, here's what you do. One system. If your kids get pushed and learn technique, but I'm crazy about technique. I don't do live wrestling. I only do technique, technique. I, I show Nick how to throw the Russian throws. You've seen he threw Jaden Ironman pretty good on the final. He threw other guys. He won with inside trip. I mean, that's, the, but you got to give credits to the father, Chris. Right. 11 right. years they drove here, Jared, for nonstop. They only miss one camp. It's a family reunion. Otherwise, he never misses it. So I so get this. it. I get this. I get this from you. This is what I get. One coach, one system. Don't don't be skipping around clubs. But how did they bring you, Moran Karshala, up as a mountain warrior? How did they bring you up in their system? Tell me your journey, not Nick Lee's journey, oh, not okay. Karshala. I want to know your journey and how they identified you early on, how they put you in sports specific school and how that they, we, how is their system so much different? How, that is the question I want to know the answer to. All right. So I, I have happened a great coach. All right. So to give you a little bit of history, my coach was a little bit older and he was in his 60, but he produces one of the best, wrestler, his student, like, let's say Nick Lee. I coached Nick Lee for 11 years, 10 years, right? Nick Lee become one of the greatest coach, right? So like that, my old coach produced, and he, you know, Yarigin, you went to his tournament in Russia. Yarigin also coached me a long time ago at the Soviet national team. But like he, my, my coach in Abkhazia was, he beat Yarigan back in his time. He won the Belisi tournament. You remember Belisi tournament, one of the most international tournament. A hundred kilos. Did you say Tbilisi? Tbilisi? He, he won Belisi tournament. Yeah. Okay. In yeah. Georgia. My, my coach was Soviet national champ. And he beat Yarigan. Yarigan. He was that good. So... Those two coaches installed into me. They, they taught me how to wrestle the beginning. Only warm up. Do you know? I don't care what the kids how do. How old were you? How old were you and how did they identify you? Nine, 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 nine years old. But we don't how need they to identify you. How they, you got to go and do a few exercises. It's not like you accept it. You got to show them how you do rolls how you do bridges, how you do back arches. Do you know, I don't accept any kids in a club unless they show me how to do a bridge. There are some high school kids coming up here, wrestle five, six years when they come to my first camp, they still don't know how to do a back arch bridge. If you want it, I'm crazy, but I can show you right here in the concrete how to do a bridge. <laughs> uh, hey, first off, I think we, this is going to be a two shirt day for I, I, This is my first two shirt interview, by the way. It looks like you need another <laughs> shirt right now because you're getting intense and you're getting into it. Okay. So you're nine years old. Carpenter dad takes you to the club in the Abbasia, right? Yeah. He takes you to the club. You go in, you do some back arches, you do some pull ups, you do some rolls, maybe a, a cartwheel, a flip, whatever it is, right? And then they're like, oh, this guy's got dynamite in his hips. Is that how they identify you? Not really, but also you have to be kind of, that's what you want. When I was nine years old, 10 years old, I have some role models. Like, you know, I was already, I have one book from Dan Gable. I already was reading about Dan Gable and I have some, I want to look up to those, the, the, the guy who won Belisi tournament and he won a uh, European championship. You want to look up to them. It, unless you have some role models and 
somebody you look up and get yourself, I want to be one day. It's almost impossible to achieve without a good role model, right? Uh, and I always have that. So, however, when I got in, Zeb, I, I, I took a few exercises, but I built my own. Uh, like last night, I, I, I watched that uh, the girls from Minnesota. Uh, she won uh, all round. Suni Lee. Huh? Suni Lee. Suni yeah, Suni what Lee. did her dad do? He built on a, a bar outside, and she was hey, doing He built her a balance beam. He built her all the stuff. That's what my dad did, a, a two by four, four by four. He built me a pull-up bar. That's it. He never took me to a wrestling tournament. He never told me how to cut weight. He never showed me how to do a wrestling move. My coach become my dad. I did uh, my job. My coach was in charge of what food I would eat. He would go in, in a grocery and buy some food for me. He would teach me how to be a better son, a better wrestler, a better person, a better of everything. So the Russian will really, as I said, but the coaches get the same prestige when they're when their athlete won. They won too, big time. They're same level. Getting their reputation, you know. And you're not handing uh, them off. Like they're not. You're, you aren't getting handed off much. When no, the, maybe you're getting handed off like when the when Uregan takes a, a Soviet national team and your coach maybe can't travel. Maybe you get handed off there, but you're not getting handed off to a junior high coach, to a high school coach, to a college coach. Think about it. Our 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 kids have four, five, six, seven, eight coaches in right. wrestling. Like you're saying, the Soviet system is one, one, coach. one, one. So that's the okay because we're trying to pinpoint it. We're we're trying to because pinpoint. Because remember. Remember what I said about Hinchagashvili? I used to wrestle his dad. And yeah. I, Hinchagashvili is almost like now what, 30, 30 years old, whatever. Yeah. Not even, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coached by his old his dad's coach. His coach, his coach, coach, coach. And that was it. That was it. His That's dad's coach is coach forever, all the way up. And I, I remember that guy because I love him and he has many. So, and you do your job. Uh, my dad never wakes me up. You got to go for a run. You got to go for the, this. I wake up and I go for a run on my own and I go work out on my own. And sometimes dads keep pushing you. And that's why some of them, I tell unless the kids is mature himself and start working out on his own. And sometimes dads are the most important people in their life here in America, but also they got to take it over the ownership. What are they going to do when they get in college? You, you, dad can't be coaching in college. And that's why some of them loses because they can't stay because their dad's telling them, so I try to prepare before they go college. I coach Caleb Romero since he was six years old. I coach Caleb Romani since he was six years old. I coach Nick Lee since he was six years old. I coach, uh, do you know I coach Joey McKenna too, by the way, from New Jersey. I did not know that. Now I know that. Yeah. So, so Moran, Moran, they've got you at nine, 10 years old. They figured out, okay, this guy's motivated. He's driven. At what point are you taken from your home and do you go to sports specific school in St. Petersburg? What's the, what's the time period between nine years old and 19? What happens in that 10, that critical 10 no, years? Not, not when that that early. Yeah. Not that early. 19. You, you still stay home and do your school, you know, high school kind of graduate. And after that, right. But, but for example, um, what happened is in my situation, it's a little different in Abkhazia. I want to stay in Abkhazia and get in university. And I didn't want to leave my country, but they demand money. And I didn't have money. My parents weren't rich. And I, even you're the greatest athlete and a good student, it's still, they want money. And you know what? I didn't have money. So I tried to stay, but they failed me. So after they failed me, I said, well, I'm going to go to Russia because I'm getting a lot of scholarship. 
I, I was recruited in Moscow, Ukraine, and St. Petersburg. So that's where I went. When I, but, but basically, if I'm answering you correctly, sometimes you got to have a great coach who watches you like a, a, a father. But also, there are great coaches, Zab. It's not like here sometimes, you know, they think, oh, I, I can open up the club. I can run the club. You can be a good organizer. But I believe you got to be a great coach. Hey, corn doesn't grow on his own in the own field, right? You got to fertilize. You got to hoe it. You got to give the water on time. You got to you got to do a lot of work. And that's what I believe our coaches are gifted to give us the proper training, the proper way to food. And even if your parents can't give you, your coaches gives you. But I was fortunate as a cadet, as a junior, I won Soviet national championship. And then from Zab, I remember this. I was 14 years old, almost going to 50, and I went to my first training camp in Soviet National. Imagine Yarigin was coaching me. What Fadzaev, Khadarsev, Khabelov, Gobejishi, all this world. I got invited as a 15 years old to go, 14 to go to 15 to a train center. Belarus, I, I, I was scared. I have to fly, you know, almost five, six hours on a plane by myself. Government bought me a ticket because I won Soviet nationals. So they bought me and they want to bring you in as a 14, 15 years old. You train already. Imagine it doesn't happen here, right? 14, yeah, that's, 15. That, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to know. These so are the I things went I the know. first time to the Belarus where the Olympic Train Center and where Yarigin was waiting to get a hundred of the best athletes. Among, it was me. I still have picture. If I would have be downstairs, I would show you my picture. I was sitting with the best world and Yarigin was coached. So once you get on a Soviet national team, they start inviting you and they will pay, the government will pay to fly you out almost every month, at least two weeks, and you focus train. And you know what? 8 a.m., you have to be right on the line, get ready to practice. If you miss 8 a.m. a run, they'll kick you out from that training camp and they'll send you back home. It's not like you, you went in the Olympic train center and you get up when you want it. We got up every morning, actually it's seven to, I give you another analogy. I used to also train with Bela Glazov's brother. They were my coaches. So we trained there two weeks, right? The training camp, every month, at least two weeks. When, when everybody on Sunday, we sleep Sunday morning, that was our break, or some people go do a sauna, massage, therapy, recovery, or we play soccer, or we play mini basketball. Like Active a rec recovery. Active right. recovery. But you know, Bela Glazov, two brothers? We and wake Anatoly and Sergey. Yeah, Anatoly and Sergey. They're running like 10 miles in the mountains. <laughs> they were way too crazy. Right? Yes. <laughs> but today. So they identify you. They identify you by the time you're 14, 15 years old. You go into a national training system and they, they identified you based on your results of the tournament. You were trained by the same coach, the same Akbazian coach. Then you go to the cadet, cadet, and the U16. Yeah. Then junior. Okay. And then so they, they, they label you guys through this system. Yeah. You one coach. That coach probably has some pull within the system. And then when they get you to the championships, you win. But that coach is training you. You go to sports specific school when even when you want to stay in your home, uh, your home uh, area, your home yeah. region, you would say. Akbazia is your home region. 
There right. was an opportunity for you there. You have to actually go elsewhere so you can get scholarship and a stipend, go get better training, leave the region that you're from, but they identified you at nine, 10 years old. They develop you from nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Then you start competing as a 14 year old. I want to get, make sure I'm getting the system correctly. Exactly. Same, same coach. And then once, um, uh, Uregan yeah. sees you. When Uregan, you're, Uregan when was you're, what Tadiev Tadiev is what Uregan used to be. Tadiev is the national coach now, right? You know Tadiev, Jambula Tadiev. He was my roommate. He's from South Ossetia. I'm from Abkha. Do you know we wrestled together? And here we are. He is a Russian national coach. He was yes. not much better than me. I'm telling you. He yes. won my one. He's an but, Olympic champion then. Tadiev's an Olympic yeah. champion. Yes. And yeah, he's today Olympic he's champion. coaching the Russian national team. Yes. And I coach Correct. the youth club here. And some of them taken for granted. Some of them appreciate it. You know what I'm giving them. You know, yes. I, I build kids. But you getting it. So, Zeb, when you are training the club, but then your coach developed you and you made the cadet, the junior uh, uh, team, then you start traveling. When you get there, you have some Yarigan or Fadzaev or someone already a big coach. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Tadiev, Fadzaev is going to be there. Um, there's going to be some high level coach. Satiev's not really a coach, but um, I will say this there's a North Ossetian who's a four time Olympic finalist. He's North Ossetian, but he's Uzbekistan. Artur Taimazov actually has a club in North Ossetia. Okay. You know who Artur Tomazov is? He's a four-time yeah. Olympic finalist, three-time gold. He got stripped of two of the gold medals, though. He right. beat Terval in the semifinals at London, right? He right. got stripped of that gold medal. But he's still, nonetheless, a world and an Olympic champion and an Olympic silver medalist. But Artur Tomazov is not from – he's not Uzbek. He is North Ossetian. Yeah. Okay? No. So I want to play – okay, so just real quick. I want to play – I want to play – what caucus are they from? Are you ready? Or what caucuses are they from? Are you ready? I'm going to give yeah. you a name. You tell me if you know where they're from. You ready? Fadzayev. Osetia. Uh, Time is off. Uh, Chechen. Chechen. Okay. Uh, the Batirov brothers. Mavlet Batirov. I, I believe they're Dagestan. They're Dagestan. Okay. Um, Buvaisa Saitiev. Chechen. I love that you know. I, I also saw B B Sar Saitiev in, in, uh, here in the world, 95. He was okay. 17 years old. I was He's encouraging him, by the way. He is a freak. Okay. I'm going to yeah. keep going here. You ready? Let's go with Dennis Sargush. Abkhazia. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep going no, here. We're going to another keep... Abkhazian, he didn't win the world, but he won your regions. Rustam Ampar, he's here too. Rustam, Rustam Ampar. Ampar lives in New York, I believe. He is in I... Chicago. Is he, he is, in Chicago? He's... Yeah. He's a little he's guy. From he's a 55 my... kilo guy, 57 kilo yeah, guy. He's from Abkhazia. So Rustam... He follows me on Instagram. I follow him on Instagram, Rustam Ampar. Okay. So he's a Abkhazian, right? Yeah. I, I hosted okay. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Gahaji Marat Godsalov. Well, you know what? I, I believe he's Dagestan too. Okay. Let me let me keep going here. So the Batirovs are Dagestan. Godsalov's Dagestan. I mean, we don't have to get all these right. We're having fun here. Yeah. But like, I, you're proving my point right now. You're proving my, uh, you know, Arsen Fedzaev, the Bat Batirov oh, brothers, the Satiev yeah. brothers. When I, when I say this to you and everybody's from the same four or five places, I think that that speaks volumes about the North Caucasus. Um, you guys have an 18,000 foot mountain. Mount Tibris is 18,000 feet tall. That's a massive mountain. You understand that, right? Yeah. That's a huge mountain, and you have other huge mountains around it. You got 14, 6, I mean, you have 18,000 foot mountain, 16,000 feet mountain, 17, 14. I mean, these are huge mountains, and it's sandwiched in a coastal area. It's a small area. It's not a big, it's in between two coasts, right? So, and I don't think a lot of people get it's a beautiful area. 
didn't they do something really stupid and have the Winter Olympics in that area too? Right. But you know, I I know even my country of Plaza, you know how good is the mountains? It's like Colorado, man, the mountains. Look at yeah. what, but they don't have the sources. They don't use business too well. You yeah. know, unfortunately, like skiing is not the most popular thing in, in Caucasus. However, Russian loves skiing it, you know, the Russians, the Russians. How far is Sochi from where you're from? Speaking about it, Sochi, you know, if, um, I don't know, Jared, how good you are with geography, but. I'm, I'm horrible Sochi, with geography, horrible. <laughs> so Sochi is next door to me. Okay. So in order to go to Abkhazia, you got to fly to Sochi, from Moscow to Sochi. In okay. Sochi, you're an hour and you're across the border, half an hour, you're already in Abkhazia. It's sandwiched it's in right on the border. Right there. It's like right on the border. Yes. Like right. I, I don't know how it's not in Abkhazia. Yeah. You, you know, Putin spent a lot of time in Abkhazia too, you know, because he's in Sochi, he's in Abkhazia. It's subtropically is the best climate. We have- Dude, they had the Winter Olympics there. Yeah. Figs. Well, you know what? Putin spent money to create a fake snow and- Yes! Ice. They had the Winter Olympics there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Just real quick, I want to get you on Carson because we're way over your hour, man. I just got to let you know we're way over. We're in overtime big time right now. We're, we're way in overtime. Okay? We, we got, okay right I hope we're not making people bored. No, no, well, no. They can shut it off. They don't have to listen. Okay. Carson, you got some Carson time? Yes. Okay. So Carson Karshala. Okay. Explain why your last name is different than Carson Karshala's last name. You are Carson's father. He is built just like you. He's a mutant. He's a mountain North Caucus. He's built like those mountain warriors, in my opinion. Okay. He is like your people. I don't think there's any question. When people see Carson Karshala, they probably know that his dad, he is a, a generation. He's second generation. His dad came over, defected from the Soviet Union. You can look at Carson. He's, he looks different. Okay. He is built different. He's yeah. built like a freak. That's what you were built like. You weren't that big though. You weren't that well, big. He's I very... Remember, I never lift weight. Carson yeah, never lift weight either until yes. sophomore year. But now he has a trainer where he does kind of plyometric, more of yeah. a not heavyweight football lift weight, you know. And I yeah, just he's want an explosive freak. He's an explosive yeah. freak. You gotta have, it's, it's incredible. You know, everybody's trying to be a great wrestler, um, Zab, but you got to have a lot of gift. Obviously, Jared should know as a four-time state champ. There's gift not just in technique. You got to be technical, number one. You got to be flexible. You got to be, have your strength in a way, not like, how much bench press you did, but how many ropes you can climb with no legs or Stamina. how many Stamina. your ability to, to, to do things for a long but time. So part of the become a greatest wrestler or courage. We called Mandraj, Mandraj in Russian. You should remember that. Mandraj, Mandraj. when you get too scared, you get too anxious, you get too nervous. You burn out before you match. I don't care how technical you are, how strong you are. If you don't have a good heart, Jared, and a good technique with the heart, it's irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think 100%. Carson have a heart. Carson is not scared. Carson, I built Carson since he was six years old. I teach him flexibility, you know, Carson does a warm up that nobody else does. I I came Ohio State a few times. I show them my warm up. They can't do it. But it, it, you know the thing is, I believe in the warm up. 
I believe the warm up and the bridges and rows and flexibility, head spin, head walk around. You don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe you can see what is Milan's warm up. I don't need to know. Listen, I know what you're talking about. I literally know everything you're talking about because Andy Rovat and Jake Herbert tried to create a system. They yeah. tried to take the Russian system and create this thing called base, base training, right? Yeah. And it was focused on controlling and lifting your own body weight. Yeah. Being able to tumble like you're talking about, because everything you're talking about is tumbling and controlling and using your own body weight, being able to balance on your neck and neck strength was a big part of it as well. Okay. How the biggest thing Andy Rovat said was, how can we expect a 10 year old kid to pick another kid up if they can't control in their own body? How are we asking them to control somebody else's body? I'll right? show you right. Hey, I make you fun and laugh. Yeah. Show you Russian warm up, a little dance. You ready? Let's, let's go. Let's it. see it. Here we go. It's not like people do. I'm sweating up. I mean, that, this. Hey, right here. Up, right, this. Here, reach, right? Reach. Here, sprawl, man. Sprawl. And keep moving, dancing, sideways. And bridges, arches, all kind of stuff. That's kind of, you, you got to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to be flexible. Not like, oh. Hey, can we get a traditional Russian dance or a, a, a North Caucasus yeah, dance? I called the can Russian. You give it to me a little bit. Russian dance. <laughs> That's not the one I'm talking about, but okay. And I'm talking about the one where they drop, they it. drop and kick their legs out. They drop yeah. to a squat and they kick their legs straight out. Some kids, Zeb, they don't have hips. They're like, yes. If you shoot in, you got a double leg, right? Double leg up. They don't have the hips. Well, they that, don't understand it. It's, it hasn't been taught. They just, they don't so, get it. And that's why they're there. They're there to learn from you. And that's a big part of what you do. Okay. Why is Carson's last name different than your last name? Give us the story. Carson doesn't have a different name. Carson have the same name, but I will explain. Blanya, first of all, you know, in American, when you have your passport, you have one, Zab Miller, right? Correct. There we go. Well, in Russia, before Soviet Union broke up, 91, I have a Russian passport, three different pages, three different pictures. It could be one picture, uh, but three different pages. One, it goes like in America, only English. Russian, first. Miran Kharchilava, Russian. Then you have the second page, because we live in Georgia right at the time, before Soviet Union broke up. Then you have Georgian. In Georgian, Miran Kharchilava, in Georgian written, different language. Okay. That you turn the page, the Abkhazian language, the original, Miran Kharchla, ends a little bit lighter. That's the Abkhazian. What it should be, what you actually are, what ethnicity you are, where you're actually from. They're all same. It's pronounced a little end different way that, than Russian. So when the Soviet Union broke up and Georgia invaded us in Abkhazia, kind of, I wanted, they, they want us disappear, do ethnic cleansing and genocide. But anyway, we survived. And I just, at that time, you know, I didn't realize in America, it's very hard to pronounce Kharchilava. So I make it shorter because it's my last name in Abkhazia. 
I always was Miran Harchla, Carson Harchla, Miran Harchla. So I just said, Carson, it'd be a lot easier. His mom and I want to make it shorter for his school. Like, let's do the, the original Abkhazian. Carson Harchla. That's it. So it is, I could go on Harchilava, but it's always, how do you spell it? K H A R S, whatever, A V A. It's too so long. What am I supposed to call you? What am I supposed to call you? Miran Harchilava, you can call me because I came here, I missed the opportunity. So but you, you my, could fix it if you wanted to. You could fix it, but then you'd have to rebrand your business. You'd have Actually, to rebrand everything. You're smart. You're right. I could fix it when I got my citizenship. Hey, I was two weeks and I supposed to take oats and go. I want to do it, Harchla, but they said I was scared. I waited 11 years. I said, I'm not messing up. I'm not messing up. But you so are right. The, that's the story behind the name. Out you're of convenience. Smart. Out of being a out of being a person who doesn't want to rock the boat, you want to make it easier for your 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 kid. It's easier for your kid now. He didn't want to rock the you, boat. You he just, just ran. You know from what that. you did? Yeah. Do you know what that's actually called, Maron? What you did? It's called assimilation. It's called you accepted American culture, and to make it easier on your son, you assimilated him and gave him an easier, more American-sounding name. Do you realize that? Yes. But That's you what know, you, did. you assimilated. But Zeb, let's say I I really love to take you one day to Abkhazia with me. You, as much as you're passionate, as much as you're into this, if you really you haven't done any justice, you've done so much justice to interview, to do what you do in it with athletes. You have to go with me to original Russia. I'll take you Moscow. I'll take you Siberia, and I'll take you to Abkhazia. You, you will know, see. Can we just tell Jared how much travel that is? What you just said—that's a month of solid travel. Because ah. what people do there is they don't. Well, we would because I'm not an idiot. I would just buy plane tickets because I've got enough money to buy plane tickets. Yeah. But I listen. I took the train from. Moscow to Kazan, I got off the train. Kahaji Murat Godsalov was on the train with me from Moscow to the Russian Nationals to Kazan, 20-hour east train ride, because Kazan is in Tartarstan. It's north of western uh, Kazakhstan. So, it, yes. dude, it is way, it is way, it's right on the border of Europe and Asia. So, so Jared, here's how we did uh, 2010 when I took Nick Lee and his brother and his dad okay. with me in Carson. Mm -hmm. We flew from New York to New York to Moscow. It's about 10 hours flight. Okay. And then when we arrived in Moscow, we also, I wanted them to see the, the whole Russia better. Right. We can take another plane in two hours from Moscow to Sochi, and you two hours, you're in Abkhazia already. But they want to go on a train, and I believe um, we took the trains up pretty much 12, 24 hours. Everywhere, everywhere. You take the train. I couldn't believe it. The tra you train everywhere. You take a train. You do not fly because there's not airports everywhere. There's not international airports or even right. regional airports for that matter. There's not airports everywhere. But and you gotta be also, like- Yeah, have fun. Uh, you can have a, a two cop, a two uh, people on a train or four people. And those trains are pretty, pretty popular. You sit and you see the whole country. Countryside, right. Yeah. It's unreal. So, no, it's unreal. And they're they're actually pretty efficient. They're fast and it's a good time. Um, I like to obviously drink the uh the beer and hang out. And it's like they're you're traveling the whole time. It's they're comfortable. It was cool. And it was Joe Williamson and I. I mean, I had a blast, oh, man. man. I really enjoyed it. But the thing is, so Moran, Moran, yeah. My big thing with you is and, and this is with Russia and now we don't even have Russia in the Olympic games right now. It's ROC. If you didn't know, 
Right. Yes. Right. It's the Russian Olympic oh, Committee. Take right. Him. And 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 um, the big thing with that is there was a there was state sponsored doping. Right. We know it's it's been proven they're serving part of their uh, penalty right now. Right. It's not really a penalty. All the athletes are still in there. Most of the athletes are in there. Some athletes did get banned. Is another reason that Russia is so much better than the United States. The system, the one coach system. Right state or it's it's um sport specific school right yeah. um you have these mountain warriors right we have these people that are that are are, are genetically different because they're they're bred to be warriors the in the you throw them in the fire they will get out of there That's right. okay okay yes but how much do you think the state sponsored doping is an effect on wrestling are they cheating in wrestling or are they just that much better than everybody else in russia how much of it so, is that is so, does that factor in why they're better than us at wrestling yeah so let me give you my perspective uh from this point for example i zap i've been here i got four kids and i was there I live a good Christian life. I want to be honest and not dishonest. I don't like to exaggerate. I don't like to manipulate. I, I am truthful the way I am. I have a most truthful wife, the most religious wife. I try to raise Carson the most truthful way. You know what I said, son? Drink water. So when I grew up in a Soviet system, I have another world championships on my team. He's also somewhere in Florida from Georgia. Go go oh, really? Gia, Gia Gogolishvili. Gogolishvili. And you know, he drank water only. Water, no soda. Do you know? I don't believe pop. I don't drink Coca-Cola. I don't drink nothing. I said the same to my son. Hey. No, no, this little tablets or little juice you take makes you pop up. It's all temporarily. Hey, believe in one system, clean water, work, run, workout, train technique, go do your job and study. So when I was there, I only drink water. I never believe one thing that can get me a shot and I get bigger, stronger. I hated it. I can't stand for it. So is that me and the Russian don't do anything? I don't know. I'm sure they do. I will tell you one thing. <laughs> and this is funny. It's true. So there was a guy when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia. I was on a, on a national team. I used to beat a lot of good guys. So the guy in St. Petersburg who trained with me, he was my way. I would beat him like 15-0, right? And, but he, he was a good athlete. He plays soccer, basketball, better than me, way better than me. And we do all that, by the way, in Russian system. We try to play basketball, uh, soccer, uh, uh, you know, all that sports too to have fun while we train for wrestling so this, recovery too i've seen i've yeah. seen i follow all of that on okay so i follow time azov he has a team i follow fadzaev i follow uh dag dag wrestle i dagestan's wrestling i follow all that that on instagram and i watch what they do i watch their workouts and i watch how they they just they train a lot differently it's a lot less pounding right a lot, yeah. lot less yeah got to have fun seven days a week you can't wrestle seven days a week. You yeah. got to modify it. Modify yes. it. Do you Do feel like it? they're okay? From your perspective, are they gaining a big advantage by doing performance enhancing drugs? Is that a big reason why they're so much better than everybody in the Russian system? Is that why they just beat the beat the brakes off of us? That's my question. Well, I. I get that question. All I'm saying, I knew one guy in my life when I was back there. I used to beat him like 15-0. And then later, Zap, in a few years, he couldn't score a point on me, right? Then he come back. 
the summer one disappeared, went to Estonia or Latvia, whatever. I come back, the same guy was skinny guy, like normal. He came back like this, right here, man, muscle, like, whoa. <laughs> he got us the juice. He got on the juice. We know he got on the juice. So this is first time seen I it. saw. Was your mind just like, you've seen it. whoa. Yeah. But you know what? So you've seen it. I've seen it. You've seen it. I didn't want to see it. He has a lot of health issues later. You know, yeah. in a few years, it was not good. But I don't know, Zab. I don't know. I don't follow. I tried to follow Team Milan Wrestling pretty hard. I've been so religiously telling them, drink water, don't chase, don't rely too much on your dad. Start working out at home. Yeah. When you're not in my room, go run, go swim, go do rollerblade. As long as you have a helmet and elbow pads and knee pads, you know, I also have 10 years old kids right now. I'm trying not to kill him. What are your He's ages of all your kids from Carson? Carson's 20? Carson is 21. Carrington just turned into 19. My daughter, she's going to be a sophomore at the Ohio State. And then my other daughter is 15, Nala. She goes to Liberty and Preston just turned 11. But he won't be there at OAC for a few more years. <laughs> he but he is wrestling. Preston Karchla is wrestling. Yes, Preston Karchla is wrestling. He will come up maybe in a, still a few years. But, you know, Zeb. Last year, it was first year. That kids did not know how to do back arch, uh, spanning his head, and all the warm up. He couldn't even do it. But you know what? First three months, no wrestling, warm up only, warm up. Now he's perfect. Now he's going to learn. And hopefully, in a few years, you might be hearing from him, but. We'll focus on Carson for now. Okay. So the biggest thing with your system is learning body kinetics, learning your body, learning how to control your body, body strength of your own, your own personal body strength, not lifting weights, no. using other tools to strength train. Like we said, the reason Carson's different than you because Carson lifts weights and you did not lift weights. So you're right. saying core strength is way more important than lifting and all these crazy lifts you can do and all these like you know almost like uh bodybuilding you're more about controlling your own body weight and learning your body kinetics that that's so the, that would be the I core of the russian zap, system whenever i touch zap when you know in america people do contact they show you how strong they are i'm like i go in there and when i touch i'm weak i'm loose yeah but i, I got a good that. reaction I got the best reaction, the best feeling. So I don't believe muscle like, oh, and that's what you lose. You have no feeling. Wrestling, I don't care how much YouTubes you can watch and learn. It's about wrestling, about feeling, yeah. feeling, feeling. Do, I, do you follow any, watching a YouTube or Instagram? Do you watch any wrestling or what? How do you can do you consume? No, I'm I'm not I'm not big on the social media at all. I never go. I I honestly, Jared, maybe I was when I was 25 in my prime time. I trained with Dave Schultz. You know, we used to take notes. He take notes from me. Huh. I take notes from him. So I used to watch a little bit my like my coaches Bella Glazov's their tape Khabelov maybe Fadzaev a little bit but honestly it doesn't matter how much you watch it's a a fantasy move right yeah Unless and execute you, it, you right. do it you do it yourself over a hundred times on a match it's not going to work right it doesn't matter some kids have so many moves, but they never execute on a match. How good is drilling, that? Drilling, 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 drilling. You drill a lot. I know that you yeah. drill a lot. Like you said I, you don't I, do a lot of live wrestling. I, it's a lot of drill. Yeah. Here's what I tell my kids, Zap. You know, I love Carpenter, as I mentioned. I got every tool in my garage. 
But unfortunately, they're sitting in a box and I haven't opened it and I haven't even used it yet. So how good is that? It's no good. It's useless. It's useless. But, but, but when I teach the kids, that's why we don't go live wrestling in my club. But when we do live drill, it's called muscle memory. So out of yeah. blue, while he's doing a, a leg, a high crotch, I'm telling him, do the Russian throw, step around, uh, an inside trip. And they got to use their knowledge with the muscle memory. You got to drill these hundreds of moves. Sometimes I got to invite you both. I'm, come I'm, listen, back. I'm already going to come down. I'm going to check it out. But here, here, here's my last Russian question for you. You and I have talked about this. Okay. How much does the organized crime arm affect how the wrestlers are paid, how the wrestlers are treated and what wrestlers do after wrestling? How much is that? You call it racketeering, right? Yeah. How much is the racketeering, the, 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 the cr organized crime aspect of how Russia's government even operates to a degree, how much is that affected? How they're, how they're rewarded, what they do after wrestling with whether they're going to coach or not, if they're not going to coach, how much is the organized crime affected? How Russian, let's just stick with wrestling on this. Yeah. How much has well, the organized crime affected the Russian wrestling? But hey, this is a good question, but I'm not sure it's a fair question for me to answer to you. Here's why. I don't live in Russia. You know, it's been 30 years since I've been, I'm Americanized you're, now. You're, you're more years here than you were there. So I get that. Well, I However, that. I can tell you before I came to this country, how it was. So even though I never got involved in any mafia, racketeering, most of it, the Russian, some of my friends did get involved, got distracted. Maybe not like who was talented, Zeb, like uh, who really have a good talent to be a world Olympic champ. They found a way to become a world Olympic champ and they didn't get distracted. However, the guys who didn't have a good talent, like to become a world Olympic champ, but they wrestle and they don't make enough income, they don't make enough money from the sport or the government because they didn't win the world, then they got big bodies, they got a good reputation. Boxers and wrestlers, especially with broken ears, you don't have to be a, a, a world champ to go to become the best racketeer. If you got a broken ear, hey, hey, they will approach you. Hey, you wanna come and help me to protect my restaurant? Some people come in and demand money. So you pay a ransom. You, you pay basically, instead of paying tax, you pay these athletes. They come and protect you from robbing you from stealing food and money. It's called extortion is the word for it. For when? They're extorting money. That was big in Russia and back in Soviet Union in 90 and 91. In fact, a few of my wrestler friends who died, who got involved and got killed, but some of them survived. I don't know what they do now. I've been here 30 years, but it is probably still some wacky tearing because the, the way the system works here, like imagine Jordan Burrow or Kyle Snyder and go and protect some restaurant, protect some business to make money. It's a joke, right? Yeah, you, yeah it's well, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But unfortunately, sometimes when you become even a world Olympic champ, let's say Zab Miller own a restaurant, and the, but some of the mafia guy come in and say, who's your protection? Who do you pay? What do you mean who do I pay? I pay to my family. I pay taxes. I work hard. No, no, you got to pay us. So then you say, okay, I use... Let's say Carson become a world champ. Hey, Carson is my protection. 
Karchwa, right? Yeah. That's kind of type of crap they do there. Yes. Carson is my rock eating goon that will smash your face if you want to take my money. Carson Karchula is the rock. He is my rock eating, face breaking goon that protects my restaurant. If that's who you need to know. And then what they do is they'll know they would immediately know those guys would, oh, Carson Karchula. Okay, we're not gonna, we're not gonna step on Carson Karchula's feet. He's a true rock eating, you know, uh, yeah. gravel, gravel, dra gravel dragger, knuckle dragger. He will so probably the name, the name itself will, will protect you. Yes. And they yes. will not yes. bother you. So here's, here's my take. And you, you can say, hey, Zeb, you're out of line or Zeb, that sounds right. I'm guessing like a Gahajimurat Godsalov, he's probably not going out and doing protection. You know, I, I'm guessing like a Dennis Sergush, they're not going out and doing protection. They're, those guys no. are making money because they're right. coaching. Gazumov, Gazumov, the guy that uh, uh, Kyle Snyder beat in the Olympic finals. He's, he's uh, what do you call it? He's uh, Azerbaijan, right? But he's he's from the Caucasus. He's from North Caucasus. I'm guessing that guy doesn't need to go out and shake anybody down or say he's anybody's know. protection. I'm guessing they're higher level guys. Artur Taimazov, he might not have to run any protection for anybody. I'm guessing he runs a gym. He's probably taken care of by the Uzbek government. He's probably got some businesses that he owns. He might be like dabble in it or whatever, but I'm guessing most of these high arson Fadzaya, the Saitia brothers, Batirov brothers, they're not running protection. They're not no. face punching gravel eaters. Absolutely. Those guys are, they're high level, but like you're saying guys who were probably the caliber to get on maybe second, second, two, three, four, five on the national team ladder. And then maybe they don't go into coaching and they don't have any other skills. Well, those guys got, that's a pretty easy transition for them that now they can just go break legs if they need to. You know, well, because they didn't maybe get education like exactly. here in America, yeah. right? That's why they don't have a biology and chemistry degree like yes. you do here. That's why this system is good. That's why I love the system, the way, you know what I preach? get education before you become a state champ i make you i make a lot of kids become a state champ but i want them to be a state champ in education being a good citizen being a good son being a good leader and not a follower and i i i i have a strong discipline zab in my club there's a lot of club around ohio but if you heard about team miran there's some rules, and I'm very strong and religious on this rule. If you don't work hard, if you're rich and you don't work hard, don't come to me. Yeah, I don't want to train you. I want the kids to respect their parents, their parents' money, and their, when they come in my club, they got to work hard. They got to study hard, and they got to be the best citizen and the best role model. And that's what I taught Carson. You know, I hope that's the rule he follows at a high state. I don't care if Carson being an NCAA champ, but a jerk in the crap. I don't want that. I want to, him to be a humble, a good citizen, a good leader, a good athlete, a good son. Thank you to the coaches and look in the eye and be respectful, be on time. Follow the rules. Without rules, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, I can't imagine being like one of your daughters and bringing a guy home to meet you. I just it sounds like a nightmare for the, your my, daughters. My daughter is. I got a pretty daughter. She's 19. I guarantee she she hasn't have a boyfriend. No way. It's not going to happen. Listen, I'm going to just tell you. If I were your daughter's boyfriend and I met you or saw you from afar, I would run the other direction. That's all I'm saying. I would probably yeah. crap my pants my and run the other direction. One day when she graduates, you know, Jared, I tell these kids, if you ask my 10 years old kids in a club, when do you supposed to have a girlfriend? They will tell you, when I will be a junior in college or graduate from college. <laughs> You're something else, man. Oh, God. Jared. Jared, this is the barbarian over two hour. I told you this would be a banger. You and I were prepared for it. I told you, I texted you, I said, empty your bladder, Zeb. Yeah, bladder. do you have anything else for Maroon? 
I'm sorry, Jared. I, I, I hope you, I want to know bored. what do you what's that? I hope we didn't make you bored. No, not at all. I love listening. I, I'm curious what you're looking forward to the Olympics. Obviously, you know, you know, international wrestling, you know, Olympics a couple, you know, we're we're here now, right? But what are you looking forward to seeing? You know, any any guys specifically? I will tell you, Jared, not I love the sport so much. Like you love it too. That's why you're involved with youth, man. And you know how much involved with parents and all that. Right. I love what Zab's doing it. Honestly, do you know how much it hurts? I, I don't know if I, it's still in my heart. It hurts me so much to watch Olympics. First of all, it hurts. Also, maybe my son doesn't have a chance. He got hurt this year, you know, after he has a great season early and then he got hurt. So I'm not crazy about too much watching. Um, it, it, it just still, I missed two Olympics. First time I watch Olympics, Jared, mm -hmm. was Denise Sargush. Okay. When he plays third, I watched the Olympics and I was so proud of it. I called him, I called his parents and I told them I'm so proud of it. And I was crying. I was crying like, why were you crying? Well, because I care and I never watch Olympics since I couldn't get in myself and I want to be the first Olympian. You knew, you knew what, everything that went into that, right? You, yeah. You knew what and, he went through. But I was proud of my homeland guy, Denis Sargouche. Right. And I was so proud and I watched and I cried. And they said, we're proud of him too, but thank you. You know, basically it's still very hard for me to watch Olympics, but I will tell you, I'll be obviously, I'll be watching because some of my wrestlers, they're not there, but they're going to come up like, Braxton Amos, Carson, Nick Lee, you know, mm -hmm. kids like that. I mean, I got a lot of other kids uh, who's growing up and uh, hopefully making that team. So it's been, honestly, I'm just expressing in my heart, it's very hard for me to watch. It eats me up, right. you know? That's, sometimes that's why I wanna see at least my son gets there one day He's still only 21. He missed this year because of the injury, but hopefully I'll be more relaxed and watch. I just, I don't know. I, I, I can't find the right words, but I still have a hard time putting it together. It doesn't sit easy with you wanting to watch it, right? It just doesn't sit but easy. But I'll be definitely cheering for our U.S. guys. Okay, here's my uh, pick. I want picks. I want picks. I'm going to give you. I'm gonna give you Snyder. I want. You ready? I want that. Sajulayev Snyder. I hope uh, I, I hope Kyle Snyder wins it. Okay, let's go with uh, Yugayev or Gilman. Yugayev, Russia or Thomas Gilman, United States of America. I don't know. You know, Gilman is trying, but you know, Russians are tough. Russians are tough. So I'm going to go with Yugayev. I'm going to go with Yugayev on that one. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go with the guy on that one. Seventy-four kilos. Yeah, Sadikov or Kyle Dake. Sadikov uh, or Kyle that's Dake. A, that's a good one. That's a good one. And Sadukov, you know, he beat also Sargush, right? He beat Sargush. He beat Burroughs twice. He's undefeated yeah. against Jordan Burroughs. I so, tell you, he's a monster. He's a monster, but Kyle Dake is is the guy in America that mostly train like Russians. Yes. He feels it. Yes. He feels it. You know? I'm taking Dake all day. I'm just going to put it out yeah. there to you. I'm going to go yeah. Kyle Dake. You got Sadikov or Dake? Who do you got? Yeah, his front headlock is dangerous too. Yeah, that front that chest lock too. Yeah. So who do you got? Give me Sadikov or give me Dake? I'll get Dake. Yeah. You're going to go Dake? 86 kilos. We have David Taylor or Nahanov. Nahanov of Russia. 86 kilos. Who you got? I would take David Taylor. 
man, you are, a, you're a Homer American. You're like a typical American fan. I don't, I was hoping for some Russian picks, but. You took Almost. Them. Okay. All right. Sounds like the 57 kilos. You're going to go with Russia though. Yeah. I can't even give you a pick at 65. We don't have a guy. So I would go with Russia. Who's Russia putting out though? I mean, Russia's got a really good guy. Who is it? Is it? Yeah, Nafanov, Nafanov, Artur Nafanov is the guy who David Taylor is going to have to beat. So Sadikov is really good. Sadikov yeah. is off. That would be a close match with Kyle. Yeah, it would be a great match. I agree. I, it depends. So Kyle Dake's got such good uh, defense, though. That's the big thing I think for Kyle Dake is he's just. But got you such know, Sadikov, he's a monster. He's a he's a, a warrior. He's yes. a warrior. Are all of those people from Caucasus, from North Caucasus? Is every guy? I think every guy is. Yes. On the freestyle yeah. team is. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. That is unreal, man. Yeah. Wow. I'm looking at the wrestling Dagestan right now on, on uh, Instagram. That's where I'm getting all the names and information from. Yeah. Now, also, you know, Zab, you, you talk about the Russian system. There's a lot of training camps now in Ossetia and Dagestan. Like, like before it used to be like Belarus, you know, Stikey Olympic Train Center. That's where we used yeah. to go. But now they're more like all over. Go where the guys are. Go where all the guys are. Why would you make all those guys take a flight when they don't need to take a flight when all the really good guys are right there? Why would you do that? And they could all well, drive there. Yeah. So more of. And then, you know, you talk about how safe it is to go. If you go to Dagestan and Ossetia, you'll be okay. You'll be safe there, too, by the way. Yeah. It, because yeah. the wrestlers, they're not going to bother. But with that, the wrestlers, if you go there, you better know where you're going and don't go without not knowing anybody. Yeah, I'd have you right by me, just so you know. I wouldn't be going off alone. Yes, please. I wouldn't be You're randomly gonna... just bebopping around, so... Jared, do you have anything any anything else for Marson or for Maran Karshalava? No, thank you, Coach. Thank you for your time. Definitely uh, great hearing these stories and your background. Obviously, I've heard a few, but not not all of that. But we what you shared today. So thank you for your time. Hey, I just wanted both of you honestly, uh, Jared. You're involved with the youth program, man. You do so much, you know, with Thank you. all that. Thanks for all you do. You know, you do, you know, more than people realize for, for Ohio wrestling. In, I'm you know, passionate about what I do, you know, and that's what I, 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 I don't know what I would be without wrestling today, honestly. Look, I, I'm from small country. It's a very popular for wrestling uh, caucuses where I came from, but it's, you can't even identify almost in a map. But I made it here to United States and I live in good life. I got good wife, four beautiful kids, a good in Ohio people I love. I've been here almost 30 years. And I will tell you, they're no better than Midwest people. And we need to get along all. It doesn't right. matter, Republican, Democrat. I don't care what color you, African American, white, orange. I just want to get along and be a good person and give back to something. So whatever you guys do in both, I know how much work involved what you do, Jared, especially you. with youth. Means some, a lot. Thank you. There are some great parents that I'm passionate about it. That's what drives me. Right. Good kids, good kids, young kids. Everybody got to build up. Nobody was born to be Olympic champ, right? We all develop. We all learn. We all learn from our parents or our leaders or our, you know, as I said, role models, role models. And I so appreciate what you guys both do. Zab, you're, you're way out there, man. You, you need to go with me to Russia, and I need to introduce you more. You're so bad. You know more than me, man, all these guys. But he, knew more, he knows more than anybody, I think. No. I tell you, it's just like so off the top crazy. of my head and stuff I saw and things I retained. Dad, like real. you're so crazy, first of all, to go to Russia without any protection. Number two. <laughs> yeah, I found that out. Call me. But other than that, Zab, you're way too passionate. You're smart. 
you're intelligent, you ask no, you, you have no hesitation, you ask questions, you answer, you are good naturally in this. I appreciate what you do for this kid. Thank you, you are amazing. And Thank I you, love you, passion about it. I Just it. don't go. Next time you go in Russia, we're going together, and I'm going to show you what the Caucasus people are. I'm in. As long as what they way. drink? What they drink? Water. Okay. And wine. 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 Okay. Wine? <laughs> okay. All right. No Ron, good. thank you for the time. We Thanks, appreciate coach. it. I'm going to send you some of those pictures, coach. I got some old school pictures you've probably never seen. I never seen them until recently, so they were buried cool. on a computer. So I'm going to send you some old ones. Good. But make sure uh, our listeners here check out barbaritapparel.com slash BA Hour. Do some uh, the singlet specials. Josh is busy right now, man, getting ready for season. So that, you know, I think, thank you, Josh. He, he, he's great for the sport, too, obviously, you know, making this cool. happen. So, so thank yeah. you, coach. Zeb, awesome. You know, Thanks, guys. Stay in contact, guys. Good luck. And I hope to see you soon, both.